some people get it and are excited by the idea of job crafting and some people are frankly horrified and they think there's going to be anarchy people are going to be tearing up their job descriptions you know systems are going to go down hello everyone and welcome uh, i've got a real pleasure to welcome rob baker today from the tailored thinking uh, and we're going to talk today about the job crafting I first came across Rob when I um, attended Disrupt HR Manchester, where Rob had his presentation about how to personalize your work. And I remember this talk was one of those talks that really stayed with me and I had my aha moments. And I'm pretty sure that was the first time I've learned about job crafting and everything started to make sense about even my own career. So that was a great talk. If you don't know what the Disrupt HR is, it's a very cool, fun format, but you can be inspired and have practical takeaways as well. You have five minutes uh, for, the, for an idea. So I will link uh, Rob's um, presentation as well so you can uh, watch it. Uh, I highly recommend it. So welcome, Rob. Oh, well, thank you. Thanks for having me. And I do remember us talking after the Disrupt HR talk. I do remember our conversation. So um, I remember it formally and um, fondly. So and um, thanks very much for the opportunity to come and speak to you today. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Rob, would you, before uh, what we want to do today with this interview, we want to give our audience, people who are going to listen to this interview, very practical takeaways. So we're going to role play um, an exercise. So hopefully it will be uh, very useful to those who are going to listen to that. But before we get there, if you could uh, introduce yourself, Rob, and say in few words uh, what job crafting is all about. Sure. Thank you, Anna. So hi, everyone. My name is Rob Baker, and I'm speaking to you in in Durham, the northeast of England today. Um, and my company, Tailored Thinking, are a positive psychology of wellbeing and HR consultancy. And our focus is around bringing evidence-based research ideas to practice within, within organizations to make work better for individuals and for organizations. And one of the areas that I think we um, don't spend enough time exploring from an organizational perspective is how do we create the environment where individuals can perform at their best and bring their whole and best selves to the workplace. And through my own kind of personal research through my masters and um, subsequent research, I've been really interested about different ideas from science and research that enables people to do this. And one of the ideas that I, I came across um, was this concept called job crafting that you mentioned, Anna. And job crafting in a nutshell is, is encouraging individuals to personalize and tailor their work in small ways that enables them to tap into their strengths, their passions, their interests in the work that they do. So in our lives, we, we personalize our cars, our clothes, our, kind of our holidays, you name it, we can personalize it. And, and we, can, we do this because when we personalize things, we tend to value them more. We kind of appreciate having a better fit to ourselves, our own styles reflected in what we're doing. Um, and it's, we, we kind of enjoy using the products that are more personalized to us too. And yet the same ideas applies to work, but, but very often we're not encouraged to kind of personalize our, our, our workplaces. So job crafting is encouraging you to take that personalized approach to, um, to your job as you would do um, other aspects of your, your life. And it provides a performance advantage for, for you as an individual, but also for the, for the organization as well. Yeah, I, I love the concept, and especially I think from my field of interest, which is diversity and inclusion, this is such an important uh, concept and tool to introduce because that can really help us make the most out of diversity and inclusion, I believe so. Uh, so, Rob, shall we do a role play so people know what we are talking about? Uh, what I was thinking of doing is, um, because as well, I felt like um, being a, a person of diversity myself, I'm a woman, I'm a mother, I'm, I'm, a, I'm from Poland and I lived in the UK for 12 years and I also have ADHD now, I've learned. Uh, so, I really, looking back, I really believe that the fact that I was job crafting without knowing I was job crafting really helped me progress that, um, get myself from being in the customer service roles to doing what I really love, which is HR. So I was thinking, shall we take, uh, take my role in customer service? Because I think that's something that people can uh, relate to as well and can, um, we can show it on that example of uh, what job crafting is. Brilliant. Let's do it. That'll be really exciting. 
Great. So we um, we've prepared um, an exercise uh, for uh, for for our audience. Um, what, is there a name for this exercise, or what? What can you introduce to this exercise? So. So you, you asked me Anna, in advance saying, are there some exercises that you would recommend individuals doing or maybe you can do with teams when it comes to job crafting? And this, this exercise, I call it the love and, love and loathe exercise. And it's all around tapping into and exploring kind of the elements of your job that you love and those that you, you, you don't enjoy and those that kind of drain your energy. And then using that as a starting point of thinking about maybe where you can make some small changes to make your work better for you. Perfect. So we've got, we, as we said, we've, we've uh, did the first bit. Uh, so we have a nice um, graph where we have the time. We have things that gives us energy and things that drains the energy out of us. And what do we do with it? To start with this exercise, and you've done some of this already with behind the scenes, so we've cheated a little bit here. But we've, yeah. I would encourage people to think about writing down um, 10 to 15 different kind of elements, core elements of their job that they do. And, and you might be saying, Rob, I've got a thousand different elements and you might do, but we'll start with 10 to, 10 to 15. And again, you can do this in an individual. I also do it with, with teams. So to, you get that list of the activities and then you plot them on this, on this graph um, in terms of whether they give you energy or whether they take energy away. And the further away from the kind of the middle point is the more they give you energy or the less they give you energy. And the, 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 um, the time component is the amount of time you spend, spend doing them. So you've, you've already plotted a couple of things there. So Anna, maybe if you talk about some yeah. of the things you've plotted and just saying why, where you've put, why you've put them where, the, where you have on the graph. Um, in my role, when I was a customer service representative, the things that were draining my energy was definitely processing the orders. So the very thing I was hired to do. <laughs> now I understand better because uh, that's not great for ADHD brainers to do repetitive tasks, but I didn't have that excuse back then. And then uh, doing returns, that was a process that we would do uh, not every day, but a couple of times per week. And again, it was a little bit of paperwork, admin to do, then you had to pack it, make sure it was correct. So again, very detailed, repetitive task. So it was definitely draining my energy. And on the other hand, things that were uh, giving me energy were talking to customers. Uh, so I love actually being on the phone with the customers. I also serve different markets, Poland, Italy, and England. So I could use my languages as well. So I can say use of languages. And um, other things, I'm just gonna add for, to, for the purpose of this task, two more things. I love doing data analysis. So we had data and I was collecting the data and basically data were definitely my, um, were giving me the energy and problem solving. Problem solving. So if a customer had a problem, I loved it. That was my high, high, high point. Yeah. So in a nutshell, that would be my, my, uh, my graph. I love that. So, and all, it, all we're doing here is creating a space for us to step back from our jobs and think about what are the bits that we enjoy and don't, don't enjoy. And it gives us that platform to kind of um, to reflect on kind of other opportunities to improve things. And it may be that you can't improve some of these things. Um, but again, it gives you that um, some data, some information to reflect on maybe why is it you're struggling at the moment in terms of the job or why is it you love your job. And if you're spending a lot of time doing something that you don't enjoy doing, um, then maybe that's, that's sort of the reason why maybe you're not getting as much energy from it as you'd like. Or similarly, if, you, if, you, if you're very lucky and you're doing lots of things that give you loads of energy in your job, then that might explain what kind of why, why you love it. So if you think about that, that chart, and you can imagine as well for a team, if you get maybe 10, 15 people to do this with post-it notes, it, it gets kind of quite interesting quite quickly in terms of what people are kind of putting up there. But what I, I encourage people to reflect on two elements of this um, graph in particular. So it may be things that you're spending and um, the draining your energy, that you're spending a lot of time doing. So they're the things that you've put there, kind of process, uh, um, processing um, uh, tasks and uh, returns. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Processing all the same thing. That's something that you're saying, actually, this is a significant drainer from your job. So that's one thing I potentially focus on. And the other is maybe some of the things that are giving you 
um, energy that you're not spending a lot of time on at the moment. So maybe there's an opportunity for you to do more of that. So it might be for you kind of problem solving or the data analytics in terms of, of there, in terms of lifting those up. So what I would do in terms from a job crafting perspective, I would uh, encourage you to think about are there ways that from that negative task is the way that you can, what can you do to kind of to reframe it in a way? So it may be thinking about how you think about that task. Mm -hmm. So there's some tasks that you can't change. Is it, is it, is there a way of you maybe thinking about the, what's the value and purpose of that task? Yeah. And you've already mentioned customers and that's something that's really important to you. So actually, is there a way of you thinking about the fact of that task of way of, Kind of connecting and valuing and serving your your customers in a yeah. positive way rather than treating it as a negative thing so maybe that's something to, to to think about in terms of that customer perspective if that's something that's important to you is there ways of actually maybe um approaching that task in a playful way so if you're someone who's very competitive yeah. at it is there something you can do and say right i'm going to do 10 kind of returns in an hour or, or 10 minutes however mm -hmm. is that possible is, is that possible to to do that to kind of to gamify and to, to have a bit of a fun challenge with it and um, and that that task or activity the other thing that the, you you i encourage people to reflect on is when you do the this task as well so if you've got if, you, if you've got maybe flexibility during your day of when you do that task it may be on certain days when you've got energy you yeah. do it first thing because actually you're saying i can get on with that task i've got energy today so i'm just going to do that first and then i've got energy to do the rest of the day or it may be actually on days we've got low energy you're saying i need to do other tasks going to fill me up with energy before i do that task so think about when you approach that task itself in the day and that may impact on actually how how, how much impact it has on your on your on your day so think about lots of opportunities for you to kind of improve on that on that on that on that particular task is there anything that comes to mind particularly for you having having had that yeah, discussion yes absolutely actually i really like the the ideas you've given me because one when it comes to processing orders it was definitely the fact that um uh i was uh, the more customers I could recognize and memorize the customer code with the name and the habits, I mean, the, the more pleasure I had with, with processing that order, definitely. And I love your idea with gamification. And, um, and I've been doing this. I know now that that's, that was my coping strategy for my ADHD, but actually I would have actually a chart. How long does it take me? or you have 30 minutes to do it and like and beat my colleagues who are just natural quick at doing that and also there was a visualization quite a lot of orders were in the paper form so i like seeing them shrinking from my tray nice, so nice. gamification 100 percent. loads of great ideas there and it may be as well if you've got a team of team colleagues it may be some of your colleagues who absolutely love doing re 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 returns because actually it's very manual task. You can yeah. see things moving down. It's very clear what you're doing. And it may be that if you have the flexibility in terms of your job, that you can actually flex some of this. So it's end of saying, actually, it's important that everyone does this, but maybe if you've got a colleague who'd like to spend more time doing this, maybe you can give some of their time then to this and actually solving customer problems that you've mentioned and dealing with the customer connection, maybe that they don't enjoy doing that element. So actually they oh, could maybe trade you and give the yeah trade you and give you some of um, more of that task that you enjoy doing, and you can give them some returns. And um, sometimes within organisations or teams, everyone there's a task that no one likes doing. And if that's the case, I would I would challenge the team to think: Do you number one? Do you absolutely need to do this? If no one likes doing it, is it something you have to do? Yeah. Number two is: Can you redesign this task to make it more kind of fun and engaging? Or number three. Maybe it's just a case of the fact that you've got to kind of just refocus it and repitch it and understand the purpose of it. So if it's really important for you or the business or the team, it's really understanding kind of why that, why that, why that mm -hmm. is. So um, that's how you can deal with the difficult tasks. So let's do the more fun thing though, Anna. Let's talk about something that maybe is an untapped um, activity that you've got. So why don't you pick one to, for us to explore? I definitely love the data, anal like analytics data is something that I love doing in every job I did. So that's, so that's great. So again, I ask people to reflect on some questions. So is there an opportunity for you to do more of this in your job somehow? Can you think about the dial? Is there ways of you kind of dialing the notch of this up? Is it maybe an opportunity for you to discuss with your manager in terms of actually um, the value that you can provide to yourself and your colleagues by analyzing some of the data to being more metrics driven? And is it the way that you could actually volunteer to present some of this data in new formats? 
and or maybe um, learn from other people in the business about actually how you can um, the statistics or the um, the information you're collecting can be more valuable to the organization in some way so maybe actually speaking to other people in the, in the business and um, there'll be lots of different ways of, 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 of doing this and again it's, it's around you as the individual understanding and exploring that and um, to, to do it so would you have any ideas of if you wanted to do more of this in your role what, what do you think you could do Anna? Yeah so in that specific role um we, being in customer service, we had different tools. So I was surrounded by data, but I've noticed they were sitting there and, and on, on behalf of customer service, we were not doing much with them. So one of the things I have done was um, I looked at the um, customer service. I started actually logging the queries that were coming from the customers in a spreadsheet. And also, I've looked at the CRM system when our sales reps sometimes were putting data in, but some of them were not putting data in. So what I've done, um, I, I looked at the most um, often, um, the, the kind of queries that we were receiving most often. And also, I look at the uh, customers, um, at the differences between CRM when the sales rep was putting in data in and when they were not putting data in and kind of look for some correlations and hints. And what, uh, what I realized was that um, showing that to the sales reps I was working with, it, in, it helped us working better together because I showed them if you put those information in, then uh, your customer is getting better service from me because I know what's going on. And on the other hand, I know what are they often asking about. So then I can have prepared answers for that. So we can, we can actually, I know it's a pain sometimes. I myself don't like inputting the data, but I actually love doing something with the data. So let's, let's work together to improve the customer service for all of us, for me as a customer service and for you as a sales, because that's going to be a win-win for both of us. And of course, for the customer. So that's a simple example. No, it's a great example. And I love the idea there in terms of the win-win. I think we find that very often when people craft their jobs and have experiments, effectively tried new things, that actually they can have unintended consequences. So you may approach this of wanting, just because you like data, yes. you want to do this to do some, some spend, invest more time and energy in your, your task with your colleagues to improve the data that you collect. But actually, so that's more enjoyable for you, but actually there's a real world benefit for your customers and for other colleagues in terms of with across the organization. And this often happens that actually when people tap into their strengths, their interests, it, the, the kind of the benefits go beyond the individual, but to, to their colleagues and to their, their customers. So I love that, I love that example. And I can give you just a very specific uh, related um, example of this when I was working with a team who worked in IT support. So they, there they were receiving the queries that they had across the business about IT problems. So they were the people you rang who said, turn off your computer and turn it back on again. They were the people you rang. And they were frustrated that they were collecting data on the, on the calls logs, and, but nothing seemed to happen to this. So the, every month the management team got sent this report, but nothing seemed to happen to it. And as a consequence of a job crafting session, one of the people on the um, who were collecting the, the uh, calls had a conversation with the manager and said, look, I'm really interested in the data side of things. Is there a way, an opportunity for me to present this to you differently or, you know, in a new way? And the manager said, well, why don't you just the next meeting, team meeting we have, come along and, you know, give a um, verbal update as well as the data on issues you see on the ground. So all of a sudden now the managers, the leadership team who've been given this report every month had, um, just had someone now talking to it. And all of a sudden they paid attention to the, to the information they were being presented to. Um, and actually they did something about it. So some of the systems that they were noticing had bugs in them, all the problems were being related to. They actually said, actually, we need to do something about that and invest in them. And these things were in the report, but they just never noticed or never kind of given them the time and attention they had in the past. So that example of job crafting, the individual did it because they wanted to kind of present the information and feel there was something useful of the data they're collecting it it raised that individual's profile but the but again their their, their colleagues better benefited from it because their leaders invested in in solutions that that reduce the overall um queries and customer complaints about the it t t issue so that's someone else who had a shared passion for you Anna, in terms of um collecting data and doing something useful with it so i thought it would be useful to share 
Yeah, that's very useful. And I think that that example also kind of answered my next question because I wanted to play a little bit a devil's advocate and I wanted to ask, you know, it all if I was a manager and I just looked bluntly at that, I could say it's all nice and wonderful, but you know what? At the end of the day, I need the orders to be processed and returns to be done. That's my priority. So how can I, as a manager, see the value of it and not uh, and not seeing a threat to the delivery if suddenly everyone's just going to do what they love doing? Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a very common challenge that I get within organizations. There's a bit of, some people get it and are excited by the idea of job crafting. And some people are frankly horrified. And they think there's going to be anarchy. People are going to be tearing up their job descriptions. You know, systems are going to go down. So what I'll share with you the, the kind of the advice that I share with the leaders who I'm speaking to. So number one is that when people, you encourage people to job craft, they tend to do it in very small ways. So not only does the research show this, that people, the most people kind of job craft in something that takes five to 10 minutes a day or an hour a week. When, when you encourage people to job craft, you can explicitly say to them, start small. So when I'm working with groups, I say start small. And I do that not only because it's actually more likely to be sustainable and people are gonna do it because they can find five minutes or 10 minutes a day to, to make a change to their job but also the research shows that it's more sustainable for them as well if they're going to do this in terms of their, in terms of their job, but also there's less likely to create kind of significant changes to their job that's gonna cause problems. So that's one thing to, to, to bear in mind, so starting small, to people to tend to not to kind of radically change their job. Number two, I encourage leaders and managers to experiment with this. So saying, let's try this for a month, whatever you're doing, let's just try this for a month and then review it and check in. Very often, I think when we come to change, we think we've, it's a tap, that we have to turn the tap on and we have to turn it on fully. Yeah. You know, that's it. And we can't ever turn the tap off again. And actually what we're doing through job crafting is saying, let's turn the tap on a little bit in terms of making your job better, a little experiment. But let's, after a month, kind of turn it off again, revisit it and say, is this something we should continue to do or change or not? Is it working for the team? Is it working for you? Is it working for the, for the organization? And that leads on to my third tip that I'd say, when I'm encouraging people to craft and do it in responsible and positive ways, it's around actually thinking about when you're about to job craft, think about how is this going to impact on me as an individual? So is it going to benefit me? Um, or is it maybe going to add more, more workload to it? Because sometimes it's easy to think about the way I'm going to improve my job is doing more of something else I enjoy. But if you don't take something else away from it, your job, then maybe that's not achievable for you in the long term. Number two is thinking about how is this going to impact on your colleague? So thinking about you can't just stop doing the bits of the task you don't enjoy. So in the example you gave there, Anna, you couldn't just stop processing returns because it means that all your colleagues would have to deal with that. So it's just, that's, not, that's not possible. And, and number three is thinking about to what extent is your job crafting experiment supporting the needs of the team and the organization? So in that example about the data that you gave in terms of the analytics, it may not be a core part of your job or a small part of your job that you want to do a bit more of, but actually if your job is around creating good customer experiences for people or better data in terms of for sales or, or, or whatever, then actually that is, that is providing something that supports that, that initiative. Um, but if, if the data you're collecting or the uh, information had no value at all to the customer, no value at all to the business, then you might query about, is it a good use of your time to be, to, be, to be doing that? So think about how it impacts on you, think about how it impacts on the team, and think about how it acts on your colleagues. And start small and treat it as an experiment. They're all kind of things that I would encourage people to, to, to do, to, um, to treat this as, as an experiment um, rather than something that's going to be for, forever and permanent. And you'll, you'll find that there's... And people are generally very, very surprised about the benefits of this that this this brings. Yeah, fantastic! It's um, very useful tips, and I actually wanted to um, wrap them up because I think what you've just said is um, maybe very useful for managers who don't know how to have the one-to-ones, or maybe they want to improve the quality of the one-to-ones, the upcoming end of the year review that everyone is looking forward to as well between managers and employees. And it can be uh, initiated with manager. If, you, if you're watching this video, you are a manager or as well. An employee may, 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 may say, let's do this. It may be an interesting exercise to do to let your manager with your career development. So I feel like this is a very 
very interesting proposition to look at that personal development for managers and employees as well. And I love the idea of experimenting and checking in in a month time. It can really tr transform the relationship between uh, career development for individual and also the team as well. Absolutely. And I think all you've said there is, is really backed up by the research as well, Anna. So there's a really strong relationship between people who tend to craft their jobs and those that report career satisfaction, job satisfaction, but also career success as well. Is that you were saying, I think you mentioned the start of this, you've been you're job crafting without realizing it, really doing it not deliberately. And what I find that when you encourage people and organizations to job craft with intent deliberately, it kind of, it, it, it just makes it much more powerful for the, for the individual. And it makes it much more likely you're gonna do it in a way that supports the organization and their colleagues, rather than just supporting yourself as an individual yeah. as well. So there's absolutely a link between um, to, to, to job crafting and growth. And so that example I gave you about the IT colleague is what they found is that, that, um, that activity of them actually raising their profile within the organization because they, they presented leadership meant that actually when the next one for a job, they were kind of more front of mind. And when I went back to interview that person a year later, they'd actually been promoted twice. And it wasn't, the job crafting wasn't the reason for that in terms of that hasn't how they approached it. But again, there's un unintended consequences sometimes you'll find that if you start doing, finding people to talk about, in, um, about elements of the job that you enjoy or you're good at or your strengths, they, yeah. they might lead to more opportunities to do more of those things in, yeah. in the organization or, or maybe elsewhere as well. Yeah, exactly. And I think even this exercise, sometimes you think, what's your strength? What do you like doing? And sometimes it's out of context. And I think sometimes maybe a little bit challenging to talk about it. And, I, and I'm going to put that diversity lenses in and inclusion. That it can be really great exercise to see your role, position yourself in that role play to your strength really, and for your, for your manager to understand what motivates you. Managers want to know those kind of things. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a rocket science. You can do this and learn so much valuable stuff together and, and make it happen. So this is brilliant. Thank you so much for, for sharing this one. No problem at all. Uh, so um, do you have any, any, any final thoughts, any final tips on the job crafting? Yeah, sure. So I think in terms of if you're listening to this and maybe as a as an individual or as a manager, the first thing I would kind of do is just encourage everyone to to experiment. But so tomorrow or next week, if I was to give you the challenge and say not not kind of completely radically redesign your job, but if you were to make your job one percent better. So in terms of if I was to challenge you to think about how you can make a one percent change to your job to make it better for you what would that be and start tomorrow and, and just reflect on how that's going to make a difference. So start small would be the, would be the, the first thing that I would do. And, and then the, the second thing in terms of that would be just to reflect on um, and actually the, the, how you found that change. So sometimes when you craft or make a change of job, um, a, it's maybe not sustainable. So you find actually it's really difficult to, to make that change in the long term. But that, that's fine. And it may be that you need to kind of reframe that um, that, that change that you're going to do, or um, it may be that that's, that's, it's not the right change for you, that's absolutely fine. Um, to, to, to reflect on it, so number two would be to kind of reflect on, reflect on that, um, uh, that, that job crafting experiment that you're, that you're, that you're doing, but that, that's the number one tip, is just to try and, ex to try and explore it. The, the um, one thing that I find, again, when, with, um, with teams or with organizations, when I'm, when I'm encouraging people to job craft, is maybe sometimes to pick a particular job crafting theme that you're interested in doing. So for some people, it may be their tasks that they want to change. And for others, it may be their, their relationships. So actually something they want to kind of reflect on in terms of um, improving certain relationships or um, maybe even reducing certain relationships. For some people, it's around the purpose of their job. So getting better connected to the value and meaning and purpose of the job that they're doing. Others, it could be the skills that they're doing. So in terms of finding opportunities to learn new skills and new ways of working in terms of development. Um, and lastly, it could be around actually making your job healthier for you. So from looking at well-being crafting, so to making your job healthier from, a, from an individual perspective. And again, sometimes that's useful for people when they're feeling a bit stuck in terms of how do I job craft? It's a case of saying, well, actually maybe pick one of those five elements and seeing what you can do to, to, to improve. Um, and at different times of the year, at different times of the day even, some of those things will be more important to you than, than others. So, and that's, that's absolutely fine. I know we could be talking for a long time about this topic, but uh, you have a great website uh, with the resources. 
uh, of different uh, shape and form. So I would really encourage people to have a look at your website. Of course, I'm going to leave the link to it. You've written a book about the topic, uh, personal, uh, personalization at work. And I know that uh, you've just launched a new product as well for uh, employees to um, to approach the job crafting in their own time. So there are way more exercises. And, I, and thank you very much for sharing that with me as well. I had the pleasure to have a sneak peek before it was launched. That was it's a great tool, and I'm very excited about everyone that's going to be getting involved with the job crafting this way or another. But definitely worth considering and I'm the living proof of that and I've done it without uh, you know the proper I, th I think it would would I can see how it would have been way more beneficial and I guess with the speed as well of delivery of uh, of the progression if I've done it in a deliberate way so it's great to have the organizations like you that yours that is promoting that topic Oh, thank you, Ella, and thank you very much for, for, for testing the, the, the digital tools that we've, that we've got out there. And I think just in terms of the website, if people are curious about job crafting, my kind of, I really want to make this as easy as, and accessible as people yeah. as, as possible. So, so please um, kind of look out for those resources or contact me or Anna for further information as well. If, if you're reading this and, and really want to kind of get stuck into this, let, let us know. Great. Thank you very much for your time and for sharing this. And thank you. No problem. Thanks so much. It's been a real pleasure.